Let's give a hand to the Covenant Court. Thank you. We know that the gift of love is in our midst. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Touch our hearts, touch our minds, so that we can continue to serve you and serve Jesus Christ, who is the gift of love. Amen. According to Webster's Dictionary, the word legacy means a gift or something transmitted by or received. You know, we have many memories of those who got an education here at Silliman University or who worked here. Some of them we do not want to remember, but some we cherish. I remember the time when I first came to enroll as a first-year student coming from a small town, a small high school, I got overwhelmed and I did not know how to go about in the enrollment. Fortunately, there was a senior student who knew my family. He helped me with my enrollment and pointed to me the classrooms where I will be going to. And some of those classrooms were the tea, tea rooms. I think some of you may remember that, if you are as old as me. Huh? Some of you may remember sitting with friends at the amphitheater out there, sharing stories. We remember those early morning Galilean fellowship when we went to the homes of faculty members. Now for us students who live in the dormitory, it was a treat for breakfast was served sometimes with bacon and eggs or ham. Attending college convocations, singing with a choir and going out to Silliman Beach, which is not probably Silliman Beach anymore now, for a picnic or to camp lookout for a retreat are some of the memories we cherish. Now, I remember some of the male students will sit on those benches along Villariel, Villariel Hall. Building was not there yet. Watching us, the women from Oriental Hall and Occidental Hall will troop going to the cafeteria, talking about who is the most beautiful girl. Of course, maybe some of the women would go back and then pretend that they have forgotten something and will go back walking again for a second look. Well, some of the female students will be there and the male would just, some of them would whistle. I remember some of the nights when we went to the girls' dormitories serenading those love songs or those early morning birthday serenades. I don't know whether you remember them. I do. After the University Christian Life Emphasis Month, one student said that he grew up in a home where they believe in God, but they really did not do much, they didn't go to church. But during the Euclid, he said, the sharing in small groups and the convocations brought him closer to God. As we remember the pioneers of this university, the people who shared their lives working for the university, we see their generosity as they share themselves with the students. We see in some of them their passion for helping develop young lives to know more about their relationship with God 
and the responsibilities of sharing themselves with others. Who we are today is partly because of the gifts that we receive through men and women who work here at Seliman University. The parable that we just read this morning is one that Jesus used to illustrate the kingdom of heaven. It is a story about a shrewd businessman who rewards the slaves who doubled his money. And then he punishes the worker who faithfully returns what the master had entrusted to him. You know, a talent during the time of Jesus was a tremendous amount of money. It represented the earnings of 20 or more years for one person. Thus, the servant was given five talents, held in his possession the earnings of five persons' lifetime. The servant was given two talents, had the earnings of two people on their lifetime. Of course, the one who was given one talent had an enormous sum of money. Now, many times, reading this parable, we think that God must be unfair because we visualize our God to be loving one who shows compassion and forgiveness. But here in this parable, God said to all those who have more will be given, but from those who have nothing, even those who have will be taken away. And he threw the worthless slave into the outer darkness. Now, oh, this is disturbing. However, if we look closely at the context of the story, this parable is not about a harsh man who takes from the poor and gives to the rich. It is not about shrewd financial investing. Instead, it is about discipleship. This parable tells us that God has given us all we need according to our ability, as what this parable said. And whatever God has given us, our education at Silliman University helped develop those God-given gifts. One alumna said, now that I'm working, there are things that remind me of being a Silimanian. When I see corruption in our office, I remind myself, I have to stand up and tell them about it. A Harvard psychologist named Howard Gardner tells us that we have been studying IQ all wrong. Howard Gardner tells us that our intelligence tests, we only measure one or two forms of intelligence. Gardner says that there are actually seven forms of intelligence. Some people are gifted with linguistic intelligence, and these are the writers and the poets. Some are gifted with logical and mathematical intelligence, and they make good accountants and scientists. Some people are gifted spatially, and these are the artists and architects. Some are gifted kinesthetically, their bodies are unusually graceful and coordinated. These are the athletes and the dancers. Others are gifted interpersonally. They instinctively know how to get along well with the people around them. And these are the salespersons, counselors, teachers, and I would add pastors. Some are gifted in their ability to look within. These are the philosophers. And some are gifted musically. And so we have the choir, we have the organist, we have the pianist, keyboardist. What kind of worship we have without music? All of us are gifted. All of us have what we need to succeed. God has created us differently so that different tasks will get done in this world. And we hope that Silliman University has helped us 
develop these God-given gifts. And this parable tells us that it is not important what our gift is, but what we do with what we have. The servant with one talent had the same opportunity as the one with the five talents, but he chose to bury his talent in the ground. That is the worst thing we can do with our gift. Tony Campolo told of meeting a woman who uses a wheelchair. Although Nancy had a handicapping condition, she developed a unique ministry to people who were lonely and hurting. Nancy ran ads in the personal section of the newspaper that read, If you are lonely or have a problem, call me. I am in a wheelchair and I seldom get out. We can share our problems. Just call. From that simple ad, Nancy claims that she receives at least 30 calls each week from people who need someone to talk to and to listen to their problems. Nancy has become someone for hundreds of people with problems to lean on. Gianno Carlo Minori said, Hell begins on the day when God grants us a clear vision of all that we might have achieved, of all the gifts which we have wasted, of all that we might have done which we did not do. For me, said Minori, the concept of hell lies in two words, too late. I pray that when we look back, we do not say it is too late. Rather, we can say the traditions we got from Seliman University are part of who we are today. In one of our Bible studies, one of the students shared with the group that she was still a freshman here. She was new in the Magadi. And her uncle came to visit her, but her uncle got sick. He was brought in the hospital, and her uncle died. It was too much for a freshman student. But then, he said, my Bible study group supported me and help me go through the studies. Yes, this parable also tells us that if we use what we have to the glory of God, God will take our meager gifts, multiply them and use them in ways we never dreamed possible. You heard this before. Our life is God's gift to us. What we make of our life is our gift to God. But I believe that is not the end of the equation. God takes what we offer and adds even more. So that if we align ourselves and our, align our lives with God's overall purpose and design, we can be more effective than we ever imagined we could be. Here at Seliman University, we are taught that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If we follow Jesus, we will be led to the truth and to a life abundant. A magazine advertisement for an insurance financial services firm shows a picture filled with all the materialistic goodies. A beautiful house, an expensive car, and the caption boldly claims, if you can dream it, you can do it. Then a subcaption whispers, there is no limit to your ability. Well, I think this is not true. I believe that there is a limit to our ability. And we cannot do everything we dreamed about. Now, how many of you have dreamed of being a professional basketball player when you were young? For the men and women too. I did. But I found out that I could not be a basketball player. 
That is where our faith comes to correct the picture and bring the excitement, the ad promises to life. God gets our God-given gifts offered to him. And it can be multiplied. Remember this. Every ability is at the same time an opportunity. Every opportunity carries with it a responsibility. And that responsibility is to seize that opportunity. To use that ability and make that ability count for the glory of God. If God dreams it, we can do it together. There is no limit to God's ability. We need to dream God's dream. If we use life as God intends for us to use it, we will discover that God is a bountiful giver who takes what we entrust to God. So that as we look at what we have today, these are treasures and traditions that Silliman has gifted us, that God through Silliman University, has given us all these gifts. Let us cherish them and let us give thanks for God's goodness. Amen.